I wanted to write Arctic Zoo after an experience I had in 2012 where I was very depressed and I spent some time in psychiatric hospital and I ended up doing group therapy with lots of young people and I became really fascinated by the idea of young people and mental health issues and I knew I wanted to fold that into a story but it actually took me a long time. It's taken me almost six years to actually get to the point where I found the story that I wanted to write about my experience and the experience of the people who were around me at that time. I think it's really important that uh, as young people grow up that their books challenge them a little bit you know whether it's uh, you know whether it's a book for little kids that's about your first day at school or whether it's a book for older kids that's about sexuality or mental health or I think that's one of the great things is that we learn through books and I think one of the nice things about books is books take place in a very private world it's just us reading in our heads so we're actually able to kind of have this very intimate relationship without worrying about what other people are thinking about us and I think that's something that books can do really well is to kind of you live in the world of the book and you're not ashamed of you know who's listening to you or who's in your class or something like that. I think one of the things I really like to do in the way that I differ from a lot of other authors is I write a book that has issues in rather than writing a book about an issue. And what I mean by that is Arctic Zoo is not a book that's entirely about mental health issues. It raises it, it discusses it, but it's not the dominant theme in the book. And it's one of the proudest things that I've done with my writing, like the issue of uh, the Kyle character's sexuality in the Chera books. Uh, it's not a book about Kyle being gay, but it's a book that has the issue in it. So I always kind of like that idea of just having a book and raising issues, but I don't like the idea where a book is just entirely going to be about a mental health issue or a criminal gang or drug dealers or something like that. I like to kind of mix it up and have lots of different aspects in the story. Uh, my number one piece of advice for anyone with mental health issues is find someone you can talk to about it. I can remember sitting in group therapy and every single person when I was in psychiatric hospital would give reasons why they couldn't talk about something. But what was really interesting was everyone who was kind of depressed found their own reason why they couldn't talk about it and why they wanted to wrap themselves up in their own world. The vast majority of the people that I spoke to when I did admit to lots of people that I was sick and suffering from depression were actually incredibly supportive and incredibly helpful. So try and just move out of your own little world and bring other people in to try and help you. I wanted there to be something in Arctic Zoo that brought the kids together. I wanted there to be some friction. And one of the things that fascinated me when I was doing my research was, uh, you know, whether kids could really stand up for themselves, whether young adults and young people could really make a difference. So I delved into history and I read a couple of books on school protests and protest movements. And I just found it really interesting that there is actually a really rich history going back to sort of the general strike in the 1910s, uh, the Iraq war, all of these different areas where uh, kids had actually like walked out of school or stage strikes and made a big difference in the world. And what's really funny is since I wrote the book, uh, which is a couple of years ago now, um, there has been this sort of environmental protest movement and the school strikes uh, led by Greta Thunberg. So the issue that was quite obscure when I was writing the book has actually really come back into the news. And uh, obviously for me, that's a really great thing because I think it makes the book feel a lot more credible. My uh, first experience of protest, not necessarily of young people, was when I was, uh, I must have been about 18 years old and I used to work in a camera shop and uh, there were these big riots over the poll tax, which was a new tax that the government introduced at that time. It was incredibly unpopular and it got revoked after there being riots. And I actually remember, because I worked in a shop and it was in the centre of London, and I basically went in the shop at half eight in the morning and started my job. And basically the riot took place while I was at work, so I wasn't involved in the riot. And I can remember at the end of the day, at the end of my shift, I walked out and the riot was all over. And I just like walked out into Tottenham Court Road and there was like graffiti everywhere and smashed windows and police cordons. And it's something that always really sticks in my mind is just this like walking out into this like weird apocalyptic vision of London after a sort of probably the biggest protest and certainly the most violent protest that central London has seen in my life. Lifetime. I think it comes into the book through the character of Georgia and she suffers a bereavement early in the book and she's kind of feeling very lost and she doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She's always wanted to be a doctor, she's kind of a SWAT, but suddenly after the death in the family she feels very differently about things and she starts exploring different options and one of the things that she kind of does is she gets involved in this very left-wing, very militant protest group and Georgia isn't completely convinced by their politics or by their arguments, but she kind of finds solace in it and she's really seeking a way to, uh, to kind of say something and give her life some meaning. So I guess the protest comes into the book really through Georgia's quest for some kind of meaning in her life.
I think Arctic Zoo was different to writing my other books. Uh, it's only the second time I've written a standalone book. And I think the thing with a standalone book is you have to kind of build the world and the characters from scratch in the way that you do when it's a, in the way that you can't do when it's a series. Um, and I also think there was quite a strong personal element to it. I did sort of fold in a lot of stuff around mental health issues and my experiences with depression and bereavement and all of this kind of stuff. So yeah, I think Arctic Zoo was probably a more personal journey than any of my other books.